What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Storytime, I'm gonna share with you how I connected with the Chainsmokers and how we became friends and ultimately helped each other's careers. Stay tuned. DJ What's up guys, I'm DJ Swivel and today, I have another episode of story time for you. And this one involves how I first connected with the Chainsmokers. Um, I've worked on a ton of their music, um, Closer, Don't Let Me Down, uh, Paris, something just like this, um, sort of all their, all their big hits. And, um, you know, they really changed my life. Working with them, uh, the success of those records really uh, catapulted my career to a new level about five years ago. So um, I thought I would share the story about how that uh, chance meeting happened and, um, and how I ultimately built that relationship with them and, and, and created a, a really great, great creative um, uh, partnership, if you will. So um, the story starts in 2015 and I'm living in New York City. And this is, uh, I actually... Uh, left New York City in 2015. So um, I met them, you know, I may have actually met them at the end of 2014, um, but it was certainly around then, end of 2014, early 2015. And, um, you know, I was kind of, I had been in New York for 10 years. Uh, as I've said in other videos, pretty much all of the big recording studios in New York uh, shut down. And New York was uh, very quickly becoming uh, a city that was no longer supportive of music. And this was sort of unintentional, but um, largely because a lot of the creators, songwriters and producers moved out to LA. It was cheaper to live. And um, yeah, the, pr the rents in New York were, were going sky high. Studios could no longer afford to stay open. So they shut down and then were taken over by law firms or accounting firms or something else. And um, and everyone just kind of flooded to LA and I was sort of uh, hanging on because I love New York and it just got to the point I couldn't stay any longer. But um, just before I left, uh, one day I got an email on my website um, from their manager, Adam. And he, uh, I didn't know him and, and he said uh, he was referred to me um, by the, I guess, current uh, president of, of Columbia, uh, Imran, uh, Imran Majid. And, um, and he wanted me to connect with his group, the Chainsmokers. Now, um, I had heard about the Chainsmokers. Uh, you know, they had a song called Selfie that, that had come out maybe a year or two earlier. And it made a little bit of noise. Uh, and then on top of that, I used to go out in New York uh, every weekend. And a lot of the clubs that I would go to, the Chainsmokers were actually DJing. So I didn't know them personally, of course, but I would see their name, you know, on at the DJ booth or in on the screen or whatever. Um, and so I said, sure, I'll take the meeting. And at the time I was uh, mixing a project up at Jungle City Studios. So I'm in the, the A room, the penthouse room at Jungle City Studios mixing. And I just say, yeah, sure, come on up. Um, you know, have the boys bring some music. Let me hear what they're, what they're doing. And, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to sort of meet them. That was all. So, uh, I guess they were looking for some help on the mixing side of things and vocal production side of things and just really help like finishing up their records. Uh, so they came up and I met Alex and Drew and, uh, they were super nice guys and, and we got along right away. Um, and we're all, it's just the three of us hanging out in, in jungle city. Uh, and they were telling me that they were sort of working on changing their sound and, um, they had a bunch of new music coming and they were looking for somebody who could creatively help them with, uh, with just like mixing and just getting everything sounding right and, and whatnot. And so that's kind of what I do. So, um, they played me a bunch of music and then I asked them, I said, would you be okay? Like leave me a Dropbox link or something where I can go back and listen to the music um, I think the week or two later after, after this meeting, I was going to LA, uh, and I believe I was coming out to LA for the Grammys. So that actually kind of reminds me, this probably happened at the beginning of 2015, maybe in January of 2015. Um, so, uh, so they give me the music. We have, we had a great meeting. Uh, we, we go our separate ways. They give me the music to listen to. 
and uh, this music ultimately became the the bouquet uh, EP, um, and that had uh, roses on it and good intentions and a few other records. So, uh, so I the next week I go to LA. I have their music and I take the time uh, on my trip to LA on the flight. It's about a six hour flight. Uh, I just listened through all the music and I thought, wow, the music is really good. Um, there is some, some notes that I had and, and some work that could be done. Um, and I thought, you know, I really want to pay it forward and show value. And so I took the entire flight. I listened through, I think they gave me six songs, seven songs. And I just started taking notes on every single thing that I liked and disliked about each song. Uh, and ultimately I came up with like a, a two or three page sort of email uh, that had all of my ideas, thoughts uh, that could maybe improve the music. And I sent it to him. Uh, it wasn't about getting a quick gig and, and getting a mix here or making a couple bucks here. Um, I just genuinely, genuinely liked the guys and I liked the music and I thought, let me at least try to pay it forward and provide some value um, at no cost to them just to, to sort of, uh, give some advice. And, um, and so I provided that and then I didn't really hear from them right away. Uh, maybe about a month later I got a call and they asked me to mix one of the songs on, uh, from, from that group of songs and it was good intentions. Um, so I mixed that song and that went well and, and sort of through that mix, you know, I mix a little bit differently th than some other mixers because I'm also a producer. And so um, I typically have uh, feedback and comments regarding like drum sounds. I might replace drums. I might layer synths. I might add background vocals. Um, this sort of goes a little bit beyond just mixing, um, but it's kind of become my workflow uh, because at the end of the day, my job is to make sure when the song leaves me, it's that's it. That's the song that's going to come out. So it's got to be as good as it can possibly be. And so I will typically do everything that I can to improve a song and then give the artist the option whether they want to use those additional parts or not. Um, and, uh, and so in this case, you know, I, we, we made a, a couple changes to Good Intentions. It came out. It was part of the Bouquet EP. And then I didn't really hear from them because they, they put that EP out. I had now moved to L.A. and I'm getting settled in L.A. And, uh, and shortly thereafter, uh, they decide to move to L.A. So they came out to LA as well and then they called me and they said, hey, we're starting our next EP and we really want you actively involved. And the next song they gave me was Don't Let Me Down, which we ultimately won a Grammy for, which is actually kind of sitting right over here. Um, and so, the, you know, and then from there, the next song I did was Closer and then we did the whole... Um, that whole EP, uh, the uh, collage EP, uh, and then we moved on and did the entire uh, Memories uh, Do Not Open album, and I sort of co-produced and vocal produced and mixed the whole thing. Um, but anyways, the moral of the story here is that it's really important. You want to pay those things forward. Sometimes you want to uh, take the time and put in the energy into something that doesn't have an immediate uh uh, monetary upside. You're not getting paid for it immediately, but uh, it's really about paying it forward and showing your value. And so this is no different than, you know, interning. When I started my career, I started as an unpaid intern and, you know, I actually did that for close to a year unpaid. And, and um, it was the best thing I could have done for my career because it showed how badly I wanted it. And I was able to learn in an environment where I wasn't being paid. So, you know, if you make a mistake, there's a little bit more leeway there. Um, whereas if you take a high paying job and you make a major mistake, you're probably out. Right. Uh, and so, so that's the lesson is, is pay it forward. Uh, put in a little effort. If, if there's something you really um, believe in and you think that you can do well with it, uh, put a little effort in, show that you care, show that you will go above and beyond what everyone else who is probably in line for that same job will do. And I think, uh, in the long run, you will uh, you will appreciate the results from from that little bit of extra effort that you do up front without sort of asking for anything in return. So um, 
that's the story for this week. That's how I connected to the chain smokers. Uh, we've, we've gone on and, and done some amazing things and they're, you know, one of the biggest groups in the world and, and touring the world and, and just crushing it and everything they do. And, um, yeah, and that was a, a really great, uh, start to a very mutually beneficial relationship where we were both able to help one another, um, you know, get to the next level and, and ultimately achieve our goals. So, um, till next time I'm DJ Swivel, like, and subscribe and peace.